Now, so far in this course, we've looked at how you need to think with regards to being a strategic communicator and a strategic advisor. We've looked at the foundation of your comm strategy. We've looked at why it's important and how to understand your audience. We've looked at how you can leverage comm strategies and tactics effectively to make sure that you are delivering on what the organization wants to achieve. And in this video, we're going to be looking at mapping out your execution. Do you know <laughs> that you need to think about execution right from the very beginning? So what typically happens is you spend all the time, the energy, creative juices. You create this amazing comms plan. You have this great strategy. It's finally approved. And then you're like, okay, we need sales to, you know, come on board for us to implement. We need legal team. We need um, the tech team. And then you go through a long process of trying to bring them on board, trying to get their buy-in, which then affects your execution and your delivery. So this video, we're going to be looking at what are the things you need to think about even as you are creating your comms plan. So for example, do you know the approval process of your organization? Do you know how long it takes, for example, for vendors to be paid? These are things that you will factor into your strategy, into your timeline, into your objectives to make sure that execution is as seamless as possible. So enjoy the course. Okay, so let's dive into video five where I'll be talking to you about how you should map out your execution because this is really what sets the stage for success. You can have a good communication strategy document, you know, with the most ambitious plans, um, with the most creative ideas. But if you're not able to execute, you know, the worth of that strategy is really just the paper. So execution is like make or break. And I'm going to be talking to you about the things you need to bear in mind in order to be able to execute successfully whatever plans or strategies that you have come up with. The first thing is that you really need to think carefully about what you need for execution. I find that sometimes execution, thinking about what is required to execute, what is required to implement, is left until the last minute. If you think about it, from the very beginning, you can already start thinking about factors that will hinder or that will obstruct the smooth flow of execution. And then you can start doing something about it rather than wait till the very end. Um, because by the time you create the strategy and you get the approval, what your CEO, what your executives would expect is that you're executing. And it's not at that time you want to deal with issues that you could have handled if you had thought about it at the very beginning. So the first thing that I want you to think about really is buy-in. You really need to get buy-in. So sometimes you create the plan, you create the strategy, then you go and present it to your executives, you present it to your CEO or your boss, and then they come and tell you, well, no, or this, or they have a reservation about something or a particular aspect of the plan. But as you begin to create the plan, you need to think about the buy-in that you need so that you, it's like you carry them along, basically. It's not when you spend a whole day or two days or however long it will take you to create your strategy. And then they come and say no, and then you go back to the drawing board. It has happened to me. It is not a nice feeling. It's very, very deflating. Um, so you shouldn't complete your plan um, and wait until then before you start to get the buy-in. You really need to think about what buy-in you will need, how you will carry them along, especially when you're trying to infuse ideas that may be new, that may be different from what the organization or the individuals leading the organization may be used to. So speaking about getting your buy-in, here's what you need. You need to just carry the people along. You need to carry your boss or your senior leader along. What I typically tend to do is I tend to sound them out. So as I'm creating my ideas, you know, it's almost like I'm brainstorming with them. Oh, I'm thinking about going in this direction. You know, I did this research. I want us to position in this way. And then if they have reservations or hesitations, I can get what those reservations or hesitations are and begin to either 
tweak my plan or I know that I'm going to have to do extra work to defend it or, you know, I find information data to back up why I believe this is the right direction to go so that it overcomes whatever reservation they have. You don't want to wait until the very end to know what their reservations may be. You need to carry your team along goes without saying you're all working together. But I found some people, depending on the structure of the organization, one person creates a strategy and then comes to inform the rest of the team. That's not very nice you need to carry everybody along even if yes they don't have the responsibility of creating the plan or creating the strategy carry them along you will be so surprised as to how useful their perspective will be for what you are creating and then finally the leaders in the key functions will play a part in execution i've heard this too many times when i interact with um comes teams in-house when I go for trainings and I speak to them and they say, oh, this team, you know, they're, 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 the, they're the stumbling block in our execution. Oh, they're not cooperating. And my question is, did you carry them along from the very beginning? Did you let them know that you will need them? Did you use them as a sounding board? Did you make them feel like they're co-creators in this process? Because, you know, think about it, every function, I remember in the video about being strategic, I was telling you about understanding each function and what they bring to the organization. Different functions have what they are trying to achieve. They have their own different targets. They have their different focus. So you can't just bring up something to them and say, okay, guys, we need you to do X, Y, Z, and we need it like yesterday. Like they don't have other things to be doing, right? We don't like it when they do it to us. So why, why should we do it to them? So you want to be able to ask them. You want to be able to talk to them. And sometimes it's not like you want to get their approval, but you want them to be aware that, ah, this thing is coming, oh. So if you have any issues, this is the right time to, to say it. And then what I also like to do, I like to come from the perspective of, oh, what do you think? Do you think this will work? Do you think this will help us to achieve this? And I can also get their ideas so that when I present the final thing to them, they are already aware. This is not a new thing I'm coming to tell them that we're doing. So it also helps you to know that your strategy is in the right direction. We don't know it all. Yes, we're the comms people. We're the ones with the expertise in communications and public relations, but you cannot know it all it's very important and that's why i say data and insight is so important you need to be able to look at the problem look at the plan that you're creating from multiple perspective and multiple voices help you now not multiple voices you know when they say too many cooks you know makes you bad i don't mean that you need all of the approval but i just need you to at least think about their perspective and then make them aware so that at the end of the day when you have the final thing it becomes easier to get their buy in their support for execution Next thing is that you need to pay attention to your objectives. I think by now, you must already know <laughs> that your objectives have to be smart. They have to be measurable. And you need to be realistic about the following. How much time will you need to execute and achieve those objectives? I find that we sometimes tend to have these grand objectives and then you look at the time and like you want to achieve this in three months you want to do this in six months with a team of two people and this amount of money how are you going to do it we are not magicians yes we are able and capable of performing magic but the truth is that there's some things that, that are absolutely unnecessary you have to be very realistic how much time is it going to take for us to achieve this 100 percent increase in in whether brand awareness or brand equity given the context, given the research. Again, this is why data and research or data and insights are very, very important because it kind of gives you an idea of how much work you need to do and then how much money will be required to achieve the desired result. Sometimes the money that you've put there is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Because you think about your organization, where your organization is, the industry context, the economic context in the in the country that you're working in. And you have to ask yourself, first of all, is this too much money? And then is this money going to be enough? Because if you're not realistic about how much money will be required to deliver the results, you'll find yourself stranded right in the middle. And this often happens when you have to bring on third parties. And we'll talk about that in, in, in a minute. The next thing is what kind of skill will be needed to execute? You have to know. So if, for example, the tactics are heavily dependent on content creation on Instagram, for example, I know Instagram is now heavy on video, on reels and all of that. And you don't have that capability within your team. You need to think about, okay, we need to engage a content creator for Instagram. Now imagine if in your plan and in your budget, you have not factored this in into the budget, into your timeline, 
it means that you then have less money to spend on the actual plan because now you have to bring on board a content creator for Instagram that you hadn't thought about. So you really need to think about these things that we've listed. What kind of skill do we need? Do we have the skill in-house and who do we need to bring on board? And that leads me to my final point. What vendors and other third party will need to contribute to execution? Graphic designers, event planners, video editors. You need to think about who you need, the third party resources, the vendors. If you're doing an event, catering and all of that, because most of the times it is you as the comms person that will execute the event. If you're announcing a new product, if you're doing a press conference, you need to think about it and you need to factor all of this into your costs and into your timeline. Another reason why this is important is because of internal bottlenecks. Because if you're dealing with external vendors that need to be paid ASAP and you have a process of a 15 working day um, payment process after the invoice is released, there are going to be issues. So you have to think about it so that you're not surprised when it's time for execution. So take into consideration internal limitations or constraints that may impact on execution. You start with thinking about what is the approval process like in your organization? Do you have a multi-layered organization that maybe three or four people need to approve? There's some organizations that even social media captions, it's not very effective, but hey, it is what it is. Social media captions need to be seen by two people. Um, sometimes your content calendar needs to be approved. You don't have like full creative freedom. You need to think about this because this is going to impact on your timeline. So imagine you want to do a social media campaign. You've told yourself you have two months, but then you need to wait two weeks for a content calendar to be approved and then after that captions will be approved that's just going to throw off your timeline that may even make your campaign irrelevant if it's something that is tied to a subject matter or issue that is timely you need to think about it right from the beginning and what you need to do if in a situation where you need to act urgently or act fast but your organization has so many layers of approval you need to start raising these things up as you present your strategy that for us to do this and do this effectively we need to collapse our approval process we need one key point person not four people so that we can execute because if we miss this window and time frame our plan our campaign is going to be redundant so again when you are now presenting your strategy because you have thought about it ahead and not at the point of execution you can start advocating for what you will need to make sure that your execution is successful and is seamless next is how soon and when will funds be dispersed for implementation? Like the example that I said, vendors, some vendors may need money immediately. Are you going to tell them to wait 30 working days? So um, people that engage advertising agencies, organizations that engage advertising agencies, for example, they're used to it. They, they know that money comes after 30 working days, but it doesn't work for everyone. It will not work for your influencers, for your example. So you need to know so that you're already telling accounts that, ah, we have this process. How can we speed it up? What can we do in this particular scenario? When should invoices be coming in so that money comes out by this time? These things can really make your execution very, very frustrating and affect the effectiveness of the strategy that you've created. Next is who needs to be informed of what and by when? Don't surprise people. Like I always say, you must carry people along. You can't just go to the tech team and say, we need this today. We need this like yesterday. I hate when I hear things like I need it like yesterday. I'm like, do you think I'm just here doing nothing? So who needs to be informed of what? Do you need approvals? If you want to do, for example, you want to organize a, a charity work in, in, in your county or in your city, what are the approvals that you need? Who do you need to reach out to? Do you need to write letters to the local government? You need to think about that internally who needs to be informed um, marketing what do they if marketing is separate from communications what do you need to tell them do salespeople need to be informed um, we want to do an event for example and security in our facilities very very tight maybe we want to do like a walkthrough tour of our building but we have a very very tight security i need to speak to the operations manager or the head of operations to say this is what we want to do but you need to think about those things who do we need to tell what do we need to do it's not at the last minute i'm, I'm just repeating it again because it's very frustrating when these things come up and you could have easily anticipated them 
before you started executing will you need to do any prior briefing and how will this be done who will you need to brief this will be dependent on the communication activity that you are doing so if there's an event happening internally we're bringing external stakeholders who are the people that we need to brief so that they know you know you need to be on the best behavior or we need to do this this needs to be clean this needs to be you know that way who do you need to brief and how will this be done Finally, it is important for you to always think ahead. You need to, it's like you need to do 10 steps ahead. Yes, there are things that you're not going to be able to foresee, but if you at least make that attempt to think ahead, you'll be able to develop possible solutions to deal with possible problems that may arise. So you need to think about what could go wrong. Like you want to plan a press conference. What happens if the press don't show up? What happens if the press show up late? You want to do a product review. What happens if, for example, people come um, or the demo doesn't go as planned? If you're in Nigeria, power goes out. You need to be able to think about those things what could go wrong and have options for those scenarios so if x happens we'll do a we'll do b we'll do c so if power goes out we have an inverter there is there is um, a generator or we're going to go into this so that we'll solve the power problem you need to think about what could possibly go wrong and for every activity in your plan every tactic there's something that can go wrong you know what if one day if it's very dependent on instagram for example instagram goes down and it has happened instagram and whatsapp have gone down on the day of your launch instagram goes down what's going to happen what is our plan b you need to think ahead about these things ask questions from those who have expertise with regards to what you want to do this is very very important there's some things that may be new to you so you want to do an outdoor maybe not even outdoor let's say you want to do a town hall type of thing in a rural community you've never done it before and it is now it's part of your tactics you need to speak to people who have done it they'll tell you okay you need to speak to the to the leader or the chief of the community you need to get on board the youth you need to go with food you need to go with merch you need to get this you need to do that you need to do that that is very important because if you don't speak to the people if you're not aware of the things that you need to do that is going to affect your execution and then speaking to people who have expertise in what you want to do they will help you to see possible issues that could arise because you've never done it before even if you think proactively about okay what could go wrong it's not in your worldview because you've never done it before so you can speak to people that have done it before colleagues that you know they have experience in this thing and say oh what should i be looking out for this is how we want to approach it and i do this a lot it's so helpful when i have these conversations i remember when I was I was working on communications for a conference, I just spoke to someone that has experience in you know, it. Like, oh, you need to factor in this. You need to do this. You need to think about that. And I was like, oh, this is really helpful. And over time, I've managed so many conferences that, that I know what to do. I know the pitfalls to avoid. I know the things to foresee and anticipate. I know the, the things that could possibly go wrong. But even with conferences, there are still surprises that show up. You know, there are still issues that happen. The very last conference that I worked on, um, it was in Kigali. I was in Nigeria at the time. I wasn't able to travel. So I was coordinating the team from Nigeria. And then <laughs> on day two, WhatsApp goes down. It was, it was, it was, I don't know what to call it, but thankfully we were able to switch iMessage, we were able to use Telegram. I was able to find somebody who was at that conference to reach my team. We use email immediately because you have to be able to think on your feet. But if you don't develop that skill of problem arises, I must think quickly about a solution. You just get flustered and frustrated, which is why I'm telling you, I'm trying to encourage you to begin to think ahead think about solutions remember you're a problem solver as a strategic communicator so you need to anticipate what could possibly go wrong and then if you adopt a solution oriented mindset you'll be able to tackle the unforeseeable issues and problems that may arise so execution should be seamless if you have a solid strategy you've created a great plan your execution should be as seamless as possible but that would only happen when you think about all these things in advance so you've thought about buy-in you've thought about getting the necessary approvals you've thought about who you need to engage in the different teams within the organization you've thought about the external stakeholders that you need to bring on board, e.g. media, the regulators, government, and all of that. You're thinking about what our approval process is like, how much do we need, when do we need this money by, what needs to be done to get this money out. You're thinking about what 
could go wrong? What are the issues you're really, really anticipating and making sure that, okay, we have something in place so that if this happens, we can switch to a plan B or a plan C or a plan D and then position yourself in a way that you're able to think on your feet and deliver on the results that you said you would deliver. Because the worst thing is to have a very lovely strategy and plan. And then at the end of the day, you're not able to deliver on what you said you would deliver. And that comes with mapping out your execution right from the very beginning so that when you get to the end, execution then begins to become more straightforward and seamless for you. So thank you for watching. In the next video, I'm going to be teaching you about measuring and communicating the impact of your work, which is absolutely, absolutely critical. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you've been learning or gaining useful insights from this bite-sized comms course, please feel free to share it with your colleagues. Sharing is caring. And this is why I'm doing this series so that as many people as possible can have this knowledge, can have this information so that, you know, we're professionals that deliver value all year, all season round. <laughs>